Welcome to a special episode of Disruptive FM. The 2020 Vision Trends Report report. presented by Microsoft Advertising. Featuring special guest, Aya Kikamova, with your host, Jeffrey Cologne. Hey, welcome to a special episode of Disruptive FM. I'm your host, Jeffrey Cologne. 2019 is almost in the books, and every year at this time, we like to look forward in a quest to discover what is on the horizon with emerging trends. How will commerce, consumers, culture, and computing affect how we behave in the year ahead? Well, the Microsoft Advertising Brand Studio decided to dig for the answers in our 2020 Vision Trends Report. This is a deck we have created that is available as a download at MicrosoftAdvertising.ai. My collaborator on the report is my brand studio colleague, Aya Kikamova. She and I sat down recently in New York to discuss our findings and generally geek out about the future. Here's a bit of that conversation. We hope you find it insightful. Before we dive into the future, let's take a look at the past and dissect two buckets of you know, these areas of culture, marketing, media, technology, and economics. Let's take a look at marketing first. What do you think about that? Yeah, marketing. I mean, 2010 has brought surveillance state. So that was the name of the trend from the 2010s. And surveillance state, really, to me, it's all about tracking. And it's all about trying to target and figuring out who is our customer? How do we reach them? Is there remarketing? Is there audience strategy? And audiences has become truly the main name of the game in the last uh, couple of years. So I feel surveillance has definitely been a major trend where lots of companies are really trying to figure out how to reach their customers. And I feel like even on the consumer side, as a customer myself, I felt I've been followed quite a lot of times by a lot of different brands and advertisers. Yeah, I would agree that this is an interesting one from the last decade because, as we'll see when we go forward into the 2020s and dissect that, there's like a big pendulum swing there as a result of all of our activities from the past decade. Now, on the tech side, we've identified the trend as Alexa, what's in the news What is this one all about? Obviously, we've seen a rise in smart speakers, but uh, what kind of indicators has that led us to? I believe that in this past decade, in the 2010s, the rise of personal assistance has become truly a trend. And, you know, Amazon has been selling these like hot pockets and everybody has not one in their household, but maybe one for each room. Yep you know, one per household is not enough. It's it's just a favorite item in the house. And what's interesting about that is that it focused primarily on e-commerce and the whole assistant is still kind of a new concept. So it's really in its infancy, I would say, in the 2010s. But moving forward in the 2020s, I think that's where we start seeing it walk and grow and start having a brain of its own. I would agree. I think what this has gotten us used to, this trend of smart speakers, is talking more, talking more to devices. We had not really done that a lot, and we, we obviously have done that more the past five years, which unlocks a number of new opportunities. Now, those are two of the five trends that we've looked at or dissected in the past decade. Let's put our futurist caps on here now and look at two trends from the 2020s. First, let's start in that marketing bucket. The trend we've identified is called Blocked You, the friend zone. Explain a little bit more about this one. Well, Jeff, if you're not in my friend zone, I'm blocking you. That's all that it is. (laughs) Oops, I'm in trouble here. (laughs) Like I mentioned, in the last decade, we've seen a lot of targeting, a lot of retargeting, a lot of tracking and trying to figure out how those users move across devices, across platforms, across time, and how we can capture them as advertisers. Now, in this new trend, 
that's really kicking you in the butt <laughs> because GDPR and all the other laws that are really starting to rise and starting to really question how advertisers and big data companies are using user privacy. And if they're not taking good care and using it with reverence, then obviously um, there are consequences like, you know, some of the big advertisers and, and big platforms are really seeing across the world. So this is an interesting one because this is basically blocked you is a pendulum swing from surveillance state. So we think of the 2010s, the trend in marketing was surveillance state. Now this trend we've identified is blocked you, ad blockers. I mean, is this a natural reaction because of the actions from the past decade? That would be my natural reaction as a consumer. Uh, a lot of the uh, browsers are now issuing what it's called ITP 2.0, as you've seen with Safari, essentially dropping the trackers and making it a lot harder for advertisers to continue tracking their user activity, which is understandable because if a user really wants and trusts the brand, it's, it's truly about the trust. I think in this coming decade, trust is a huge underlying theme for this particular trend. If I am trusting this brand, I want to be in the friend zone and that I will establish that friend zone and friendship through following that brand on social media like Facebook and Instagram or search for it on different um, browsers and you know different search engines like Bing, for example. <laughs> However, if there is a brand that is I don't trust and, and I see that they're not necessarily using my data correctly, I will try to block them and I will definitely use all the ad blockers to ensure that they're not following me around. So there's a huge shift towards the customer-centric experience, and CX will be a big part. And I think Microsoft has definitely already shifted in that direction. It's a huge part of our strategy. If you're not thinking about your customers and their experience and their experience of you as a brand yeah. and, and their trust experience of you, what you do with their data and how you reach them and what you tell them when you reach them, then you are not necessarily playing the great game in the next decade. You might be swallowed by competitors. So the big takeaway for this particular trend is to ensure that you have really strong customer-centric strategy that that puts you in the friend zone and not in the block zone. Yeah, I don't want to be in the block zone. Let's pivot here for a second. And of course, for our listeners, those who want to read all of the trends, you'll be able to download them in our special 2020 vision report at MicrosoftAdvertising.ai. It will be available in January. The trend of tech, we've identified for the 2020s something we call victory of defaults. What is this and how has the last five years of smart speakers and digital assistants led us up to this victory of defaults trend that we're identifying for the next decade? Yes. So this is, as you mentioned, a continuation of the trend from the last decade of rise of AI and personal assistance. And as I mentioned, we were born last decade as personal assistance and now we're starting to make decisions and really smart decisions and we have to know the preferences of our users and of the brands and understanding of the landscape. So the rise of technology and AI is enabling us to make those decisions fairly quickly based on preferences and algorithms that have predictive models and also conversational speech recognition and all of the technology that we are you know, at the cusp of developing. So victory of default is truly about making those smart decisions and being in the default. And specifically for advertisers who are willing to play in this space and to win these digital marketplaces, it's important for them to account for what kind of default decisions these AI and personal assistants are making. So for example, if I am searching for a pair of shoes and I have a favorite brand I will share, which is a bucket feet, 
they might want to interact with me in multiple ways. If I have my personal assistant and I ask her about the shoes that I want to buy, obviously, what are the best shoes for you know, the next meeting that I have and she knows my calendar, she knows who I'm meeting with and she knows the style that I wear, then she can automatically kind of suggest bucket feet and then give me the coupons. At the same time, Bucket Feet is also all about art and they support artists, local artists. So if I'm asking about there's an art convention or if there's some sort of new art gallery that opening or something like that, there is an opportunity for Bucket Feet. That's my favorite brand that I'm a you know loyal consumer to come in and understand that that's an opportunity to engage and have a conversation with me and then they can come in and say hey here's an art gallery that you might be interested in that is not far from our store we are going to be in the art gallery sponsoring and if you come by our desk we'll give you a 20% discount for your next purchase so there's so many opportunities to become the default and to reinforce your brand and to as a tie to our marketing trend to become the friend and and have that one-on-one relationship and very customized conversation that we can have together. Now, there was one point that you made that I wanted to ask another question on, which is you said conversational language. Already we're seeing a pivot where you can ask full questions in a search engine and it's going to try to give you the best answer. Have we still seen a lot of companies lag in this area where they're bidding on keywords and not really putting in like the full phrases they should basically be bidding on so that they're relevant? Is this another area that ties into this whole trend because... The trend is around conversation. It is around conversational agents. But that still applies to search engines, which are sort of the brain for this. Should we have more teams sitting down and saying, hey, what are the various phrases that make up natural language that we should be bidding on rather than just the keywords that we've bid on in the last decade? Absolutely. I think what a lot of advertisers and marketers are doing today is treating search and treating personal assistance as bottom of the funnel. And they're not really thinking about, well, how do we engage full on? Like it's a conversation throughout. Once I bought, I'm not important anymore, for example, right? Like in general, they just want a conversion and and get out. And usually trying to capture those users at the very lowest funnel with keywords that we may potentially utilize as when we're ready to buy. However, as a consumer, my decision journeys it can be you know, very complex and unique across devices across time. Assistance and search is truly a conversation, and it's a dialogue. It's not just the one-way, one-time interaction. It's truly a relationship-building platform. I think that's going to be the shift in the victory of defaults in this technology trend in combination with the marketing trend where we need to ensure that we view our consumers differently and we view search differently and personal assistance differently as a conversation. Imagine I'm going to a fair and I'm talking to these different booths, right? And then one booth is like, hey, are you ready to buy? And I'm like, no. But the other booth is like, let's have a conversation. I want to get to know about you. What are your preferences? What's your favorite color? Of course, I'm going to go and buy with the booth and the brand that has a conversation with me rather than somebody who is demanding my money in my pocket. (laughs) So with that, I think that's the shift that we will be seeing towards the personal assistance and the conversational search. You're listening to a special episode of Disruptive FM. This is Jeffrey Colon and Aya Kikamova of the Microsoft Advertising Brand Studio. Now, Aya, let's pivot the conversation to be about you, since we talked a little bit about personalization on that last segment. What do you have on your radar as something that's exciting that you're keeping an eye out for in the upcoming decade? 
Oh, that's a nice, awesome question. Thank you, Jeff. I think there are so many trends that are happening, but as a geek in digital advertising, I love the idea of bringing augmented reality into the ad space and also merging the offline and online. I mean, that started happening with the tracking and all of the things that we discussed from the previous decade with the surveillance. But at the same time, the experiential part of it is still kind of at the very beginning stages. So imagine you're walking down Times Square and there's all these digital ads on the screen. There's all these 2D ads and you have no way of controlling them. They're just fed into you. Imagine you pull up your phone and you're starting to have an interactive AR experience with those ads and you're able to customize them and interact them in a way that makes you feel like it's a game and it's fun and you earn points, you get a coupon, you by you're just enjoying an experience as you're walking down Times Square versus you're just consuming these ads without a choice. Augmented reality will be very interesting trend and a key point to success in the new decade to come and probably towards the last half just because there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to happen but still it will be such an exciting experience and I've already witnessed it at the Microsoft Ignite where our CEO Satya and a couple of other colleagues of ours have played a joint Minecraft game using AR experience just on the floor using their phones so it's it's quite possible the technology is here is just the adoption that needs to grow. Now you brought up something interesting with that. You talked about how augmented reality usually unlocked with a mobile device. Could you see a growing trend with wearables, specifically glasses, because of augmented reality? Uh, meaning that, you know, the glasses that I have on right now don't just allow me to see Distance, but also might be able to see augmented reality. Do you see something like that happening in the next decade? Absolutely. I definitely see this trend. I mean, Alphabet just bought Fitbit. That's one wearable company. And then Snapchat has glasses already. Warby Parker, as you mentioned previously, might be joining into the game. And I think it has to merge with the culture trend if it becomes some sort of cool cultural thing that, hey, I've got these glasses. They're affordable. And they allow me to do, you know, multiple things, not just interact with ads, but something that is very important and useful, like I can see my blood pressure or sugar or things like that, that's definitely a factor. Yeah. I, I, I would wear glasses if they looked good and they gave me a lot of functionality for sure. I think those are also trends too if we go back to the past decade. I mean, we saw Google experimenting with this with Google Glass and then Snap got involved with glasses and now I know Facebook's getting involved and I've heard rumors that Warby Parker, who's not even a tech company, wants to figure out how to maybe even move into this area. I think it's one of those things when you look back on it in 2012 when Glass debuted it might be maybe the end of the next decade by the time this is mainstream but as we know it takes years and decades for research and development and cultural adaptation to happen i mean not everybody wants to put on funny looking glasses Mm -hmm. but if they look like you're wearing normal glasses i mean that could be something that really sort of helps that trend hit a tipping point Yes, and not forgetting the marketing trend that blocked you, making sure that trust and privacy is paramount and at the core of that innovation. Good point. And what about you, Jeff? Let's let's talk about your trend. What do you think what's coming? Yeah, no, thanks for asking. I've had my pulse on connected TV. I mean, if you look at the streaming wars and the OTT battles that have been taking place at the end of the 2010s, I think that has set up a whole new ad landscape, ads landscape in the next decade that, you know, not a lot of us are really talking about because I think a lot of users have assumed that I've signed up for these services. There will never be ads on those platforms. And not really looking at media history, you know, there weren't a lot of ads on the internet, or you should say the World Wide Web when that first debuted. There weren't a lot of ads on television or cable TV initially. We now know that that's no longer the case. There weren't ads on radio back in the day. I think 
all the time there's always this sort of loophole or this area in which monetization always sort of factors into a lot of these emerging media platforms. I mean, if we look back on social media, Facebook just 12 years ago, there were no ads on Facebook. Now they're littered with ads. So I think in the connected TV landscape, it'll be interesting to see how these players use data for more interesting ad opportunities and what that could be is basically hey we know this show reaches three million people what big brand wants to buy pre-roll in front of it i do think that a lot of the ads will look like the ads we see on youtube pre-roll mid-roll maybe Mm -hmm. post-roll but i think there's a lot of room for growth there in terms of more interactive ads i'd love to see more of this choose your own adventure type of ad that takes place on some of these platforms so i think those are things that we'll just have to continue to watch but i do think that is a whole new area or a whole new landscape for advertising to inhabit i love that i love that you mentioned the choose your own adventure just reminds me of the black mirror show and i think i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing but yeah <laughs> i think it's a great thing i love black mirror <laughs> i think that really sums up Uh, the whole theme of what we discussed today is choose your own adventure and I feel that's going to be the main theme for the coming decade whether it is in the culture marketing media tech or economics is literally giving people choices and respecting those choices with privacy and trust so with that we are so excited that you are joining and listening in and we have a lot more exciting information and trends that are coming up in 2020 january with a lot of tidbits and exciting guests. So stay tuned and happy new year. Thanks again. That was Aya Kikamova, my brand studio teammate and co-author of our Microsoft Advertising 2020 Vision Trends Report. We're excited about it and we invite you to check it out, download it and share it with your colleagues. It's available beginning January 13th on MicrosoftAdvertising.ai. Okay, that's going to wrap up a special episode of Disruptive FM. As always, the socials. We're on Twitter and Instagram, at Disruptive FM. And please rate, review, and subscribe to the show. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, Deezer, iHeartRadio, and Pandora. From all of us here at DFM, have a happy holiday season and a future-ready new year. I'm Jeffrey Colon. We'll catch you next week. You've been listening to Disruptive FM with Microsoft Communications designer Jeffrey Colon. All thoughts are his own. Disruptive FM is produced in Los Angeles by Feeler Media. 